Philip Schreibel, Senior Market Analyst, Blue Line Futures. Good morning, Phil. Thank you so much for joining us and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for having me. So, Phil, your first take on, um, of course, on situation and the upcoming Powell's hearing. Do you think that it might change in any way the equities performance? They are very hawkish, and it seems like several Fed officials are as well. So, you know, it, we've seen that priced into the bond market. We've seen yields push up to some of the highest levels quite a while. It has scared quite a bit of the equities. Uh, we saw a lot of traders exit at their positions, and it was really a race uh, out of U.S. equities. So I think that all that, we've hit the peak hawkishness, and we could start to see a more normalized market volatility to come back down, U.S. equities to grind back higher. So I like buying the dip down here. So I just wanted to show you very quickly, of course, the crude oil prices, everyone, because 2021 has been a banner year for the energy sector, specifically talking about crude oil, it probably natural gas here in Europe, to be more specific. I was wondering, what's the outlook from now on, considering the OPEC policy uh, when it comes to output production, um, to, to output increase, sorry, and of course, the U.S. policies? Yeah, we have low inventories. There's low capital spending going into that sector and low uh, spare capacity. So we are really optimistic on oil, especially in the second half of the year. We should see um, substantial growth in the demand for crude oil and also gasoline. So any kind of correction you get, you want to be adding those positions to the long side. I think this latest COVID variant was really kind of the icing on the cake where we had that big sell off right after Thanksgiving. And now we've come back, we've erased those losses. So I think it clears the path higher. I think that any kind of correction needs to be bought. And, and how do you explain the difference between the European gas prices and the US gas prices? You know, a lot of it is just how the capacity is, how you know pipelines are routed and things like that. I mean, we, we don't really have any kind of energy crisis here because of the fact that we've got a lot of inventory and it's such a politicized um, view that I don't think we could get to the to the situation where like something like Kazakhstan has gotten in the United States. The only time I ever see, you know, these long lines and these big problems is when you have a natural disaster either occurring or about to occur like something like a hurricane. We'll see, you know, places out of gasoline and prices spiked, but price gouging is really frowned upon. You can be highly penalized if you do something like that in the United States. Uh, on the other side, I just wanted to focus very quickly on precious metals. We do see the gold stable above $1,800 an ounce. Uh, so what's driving the price action at this point? Because we've seen the gold pretty numble in the past two months. Yeah, it's it hasn't really gone anywhere. So we're more trading it in a range when it corrects below 1800 and we start to scale in on the downside when we get north of, you know, 1810 to 1830, uh, we start to scale back out of it. We have longer dated call options in case the market does break out to the upside. We've seen it do really well. The the, the yields are factored in already. Um, we don't anticipate yields are going to go much higher. It's a dollar index. The dollar index is what's been driving prices back and forth today. If we can get another breakdown in the dollar, we could get a rally in the euro currency, a rally in the British pound. Um, you're going to see gold prices trend higher. Is it the same story for, for the silver since they're going together most of the time? Not always, but most of the time? Yeah. Silver, platinum, and palladium were your three worst commodities last year. We think that they can do substantially better this year. A lot of it is supply chain issues when it comes to silver. Most of the silver that's mined, the majority out of it, out of like Mexico and, and South America, are all shipped to China. And then from China, they're put in these products, you know, technology related products, and shipped out. The, the shipping issues and logistical issues on the supply chain front has really cause problems with um, you know the silver demand. Supply is very tight, demand is there, it's just that they're not creating the products um, with, with silver, the end product there. But we think that those supply chain issues can be resolved, especially in the second half of this year. And, and final take, Phil, you just mentioned, of course, the treasury yields. I just wanted to show everyone the current price action over there, 1.76 when it comes to the T-note, um, um, the 10-year T-note yield, and the 30-year at 209, the two-year at 0 0.92. So what's signaling the bond market, first of all, and secondly, what kind of an impact might have um, those higher treasury yields on equities and not only, of course, commodities? 
we think that they're at their their peak right now. We don't anticipate them to go too much higher uh, on yield specifically. They got too hawkish, and what they're gonna, the Fed's going to do is they're going to tighten into a slowdown. You'll see it go from four rate hikes down to three, probably two or one are the reality of it. I just don't see them um, derailing the um, glo- the recovery that we have here by taking rates up to some uh, unprecedented level so fast. Thank you very much. Philip Schreibel, Senior Market Analyst, Blue Line Features. Thank you for joining us and have a great day ahead. You too.